Sometimes you just need to remind yourself and anyone or anything else that's listening who's really in charge. Hi, I'm Darren Wright from 12 Church, and in just a few seconds here, I'm going to share with you a medley of scriptures that you can use as a form of a warfare prayer. Sometimes I find, and maybe you find yourself in this state as well, working on something, whether ministry-wise or praying or something, and, and it's like the air is crowded. It's like your, your thoughts are confused. It's like, it's like you're under some kind of oppression. And what I do at that point, I go to the Word, and typically I will pray this prayer I'm going to share with you that is really just a medley of scriptures that I've pulled together that remind me and remind the forces of darkness who's in charge. And to be clear, it's not me. I think you'll find this prayer helpful. You'll be able to access the manuscript, the transcript of this prayer in the notes. All the Bible references, etc., will be on the screen. And if you find this kind of teaching, this kind of video helpful, encouraging, uh, please let me know with a thumbs up and a comment and I'll be sure to produce more of these practical tools. The Bible is full of verses that you can use as prayer. Here are a few that I use when I feel like I'm on the very front line of the battle. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith. Submit yourself then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. When you are dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins having canceled the written code with its regulations that was against us and that stood opposed to us, he took it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He, ha he has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Calling the twelve to him, he sent them out two by two and gave them authority over evil spirits. They went out and preached that people should repent. They drove up many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. After this, the Lord appointed seventy-two others and sent them out two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. The seventy-two returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do you not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven? Jesus said, Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Through you we push back our enemies. Through your name we trample our foes. The Lord is faithful. He will strengthen and protect you from the evil one. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people both now and forevermore.